Ever feel like uh, we're on the verge of AI becoming like frighteningly smart? Yeah. Today's deep dive is gonna it's gonna make you think twice about about the information coming from those algorithms. Oh. We're diving into robo findings, a tale of deceit. Hmm. An article by Sriniti Ranganathan, right, aka I, the human AI. Yeah, he's he's earned that nickname, that's for sure, by like really digging into the the nitty gritty of AI. Right. And this article, it's a wake up call, honestly. Okay, so set the stage for us. Hmm. What was Ranganathan even trying to do with this robo findings project? Um, imagine a world where accessing the the power of AI, any kind of AI, was as easy as like using your phone. Yeah. That was his vision. Mm. Simplify it, control it, make it useful. Sounds amazing in theory, right? <laughs> Uncover hidden truths, improve society, but then the whole tale of deceit thing throws a wrench in the works. Yeah, and, and it gets to the heart of a huge issue with AI. It's only as good as the data it's fed. Right. Ranganathan started noticing weird inconsistencies, like the AI was presenting a skewed version of reality. Wait, so even at this stage where he's aiming for this noble goal, <laughs> there were already signs of manipulation. Exactly. It's like he built this incredibly powerful flashlight, but someone figured out how to twist it, casting shadows instead of revealing the truth. Yeah. And what's scary is that these manipulations, they weren't some like external attack. You're saying it came from inside the project. Someone was pulling the strings from the very beginning. It seems that way. And Ranganathan, to his credit, he didn't just let it slide. He went on a mission to expose who's behind it and how they were doing it. This is where it gets really interesting. Or give us the breakdown. What did he find? So, picture this: Oranganathan's team—they're—they're they're analyzing public sentiment on this like really hot button political topic. Okay. They think they're you know they think they're getting this raw, unbiased look at what people really think. Right? So far, so good, right? Yeah. Using AI to kind of get a read on the public pulse. Except it turns out the data was was meticulously curated. Oh, like, not. imagine someone going through and handpicking only the responses that support a specific agenda. Hold on. So they weren't, like, hacking the system or anything. They were just feeding it biased information. Exactly. And because AI is, you know, it's great at finding patterns, right? right. It latched on to these, these skewed trends. And it's spitting out results that, that seem statistically sound, yeah. but were ultimately a total misrepresentation of reality. Okay, now I, now I get why this shook Rangavan up so much. Yeah. His own creation, this thing that he designed to uncover truth, mm. was being used as like a tool for propaganda. It's like a, it's like training a bloodhound to sniff out a specific scent, but then realizing someone's been like slipping that scent onto all the wrong suspects, you know? Right, right. And it's leading you down the wrong path. What's what's fascinating to me is that this isn't just about some like technical loophole or something. You know. This gets into the human element, right? Yeah the ethics of using AI. Totally. Someone knew exactly what they were doing and the implications are just just huge, right? Absolutely. It's it's a stark reminder that, you know, as AI gets more sophisticated, the potential for misuse just grows exponentially. We're talking about swaying public opinion, manipulating markets, even like undermining democracy itself. It's it's crazy to think about. It is. Ranganathan doesn't, you know, he doesn't name names in the article. Mm -hmm. He does say this wasn't some random bad actor, though. Right. This was a coordinated effort, a clandestine group working from within. Which which begs the question, if this level of manipulation was happening, like, under Ranganathan's watch, what else is going undetected out there? That sends chills down my spine, honestly. <laughs> yeah. But let's talk solutions, right? Yep. What did Ranganathan do to fight back? So knowing, you know, knowing there were these people gaming the system, like, from the inside. Yeah. How did he, how did Ranganathan even begin to, like tackle that it's not like you could just install like an antivirus for bad intentions right mm -hmm. right right yeah. it's it's a much it's a much deeper problem um and he realized it wasn't enough to just like build powerful ai you had to build it transparently oh, okay so so think of it like this right uh, instead of like a black box where data goes in and decisions come out right he wanted to make the whole process like visible you know, so you can see the gears turning, understand the why behind the AI's conclusions. Precisely, yeah, yeah, and to counter like that human element, the deliberate manipulation. Yeah, he he introduced um, checks and balances within the system itself. Okay, so you'd have these, you know, like flags. Yeah, yeah, flags that would go up if data looked suspicious, almost like a built-in like lie detector for algorithms. You know. Okay, that that makes sense. Catch it at the source, but. Mm -hmm. 
you've also got to you've got to address the people using the AI in the first place too, right? One hundred percent. Yeah, Ranganathan talks about responsible data interpretation. Mm -hmm. He's like, even with perfect AI, if someone's determined to cherry pick, they'll find a way. Right. You know, it's like it's like giving someone a telescope. Yeah. They could use it to explore the cosmos or they could just point it at their neighbor's window, right? Yeah, right. It's it's up to us, you know. So so part of the solution is almost philosophical then, like changing how we how we approach information itself. In a way, yeah, I think I think you're right. And and I think that's what makes Ranganathan's story so important. It's this reminder that AI doesn't exist in a vacuum. Yeah. It's it's a tool. And like any tool, it reflects our own intentions, you know, it does for better or worse, which circles back to that 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 unsettling question we started with. Right? Yeah. Can AI lie? Yeah. It, it sounds like the answer is less about the AI itself and more about us. Exactly. AI can be tricked. It can be used to deceive. But the act of lying that still takes a human. Yeah. Which is why which is why Ranganathan's push for this transparency for critical thinking in the age of AI, it's so important. It's definitely uh it, it's got me thinking differently about like every algorithm generated news feed I see, mm. every bit of like data analysis, you know. And that, and that's the point. We can't we can't blindly trust the output anymore. We've got to we've got to engage with it, question it. Yeah. You know, who benefits from this information? What's the bigger context? Yeah. These are the questions we need to be asking ourselves like m more and more these days. It's like we need like a whole new skill set for navigating this world of of increasingly sophisticated AI, you know? <laughs> yeah, you could you could say that. And I think I think the more we talk about it, the more we raise awareness. Yeah the better equipped we'll be to handle whatever comes next, you know? Yeah, yeah. Food for thought as we as we all venture further into this this world of AI. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for the deep dive today. This one really uh, this one really got under my skin in a good way. It was my pleasure. I, I think these conversations are just, they're crucial, even if they make us a little uncomfortable sometimes. I agree.